back on the show talking hoops again with our hogville.net insider that is the hog hoops insider that is kevin mcpherson and you know kevin's been talking a lot about isaiah joe as a lot of ridgeback fans have after that performance yesterday 21 points as we mentioned against the mizzou tigers 78 68 final the patience kevin from isaiah joe it gets on the board about midway through that first half. Arkansas was down 13 at that point. But I think when you really look at his presence on the floor, it's not just when he struck. And he made some big shots at big times as Arkansas, you know, ended up winning by 10. Uh, but you really look at what it does, how it opens up the offense for others. Because Arkansas, even with Mason Jones and the astronomical numbers he's been putting up, he's a guy that requires a lot of dribbling to set things up. Desi Seals is a drive to the basket guy. We know Jimmy Witt, who's a good scorer, also needs to dribble the ball to kind of work into his spots that he likes. But Isaiah Joe can strike within a millisecond when he catches the ball off catch and shoot. He doesn't require a lot of dribbling to get in his offense, but you must keep a defender on him at all times, even 25, 26 feet away from the basket. So it changes how a defense plays, and it opens it up for other players. I saw it multiple times yesterday uh, where Joe got a little bit of daylight. A defender would leave their man that was on the ball just to go cover him up and leave a guy wide open. So that makes things easier for others. So 21 points, 5 of 10 from 3. He looked like his old self, but really, you look at how the dynamics of Arkansas's offense. Other guys like Jimmy Witt got back to 50% shooting, scoring 14 points. Desi Seals, big second half, 14 points in the last th uh, 12 and a half minutes, and some big shots down the stretch along with Isaiah Jones. Then Mason Jones, you know, leads the team in rebounds and assists, uh, but hits four big free throws late. So you see a more uh, balanced attack, a balanced production, and that's what Arkansas is going to need now that they've ended this five-game slide uh, as they come down the stretch with really opportunities now to get, uh, you know, they're still on the bubble, but they can get back on the right side out of it and maybe even better. Yeah, what about the outlook for the NCAA tournament? 17 to 10 record, 5 and 9 in the SEC. Well, I think Arkansas with two weeks left in the SEC season, regular season, that's four more games. I think any combination of winning the last four in the regular season, which won't be easy, two at home, two on the road. They've got Tennessee Wednesday night. They've got another game a week later against LSU at home. That'll be a big one. And then two road games against Georgia and Texas A&M, games that are winnable. But some combination of four more wins, whether that's finishing out the regular season undefeated, maybe going 3 and 1 in picking up a win in the SEC tournament. Uh, but I think that would be enough for Arkansas to work its way in. It's not about just getting to 21 wins, but you look at them going 12-1 and one in non-conference, some quality wins on the road. At Indiana is a quad one win. Even Georgia Tech, that was a quad two win on the road. And so I think really with Arkansas, if they can get to nine wins against SEC competition one way or another, I think that's going to be enough to get them in. Obviously, what other teams on the bubble are doing is going to have some impact on that. But Arkansas's net ranking is really good. And I think the committee, all things else being equal with other bubble teams will look at the time without Isaiah Joe and that'll actually work in Arkansas's favor. Again, they've still got work to do, but I think it's going to, in the end, winning four more will probably do enough to punch him and get him in. Got about 115 left here in this segment, Kevin. Eric Musselman and Corey Williams with a chance to visit that game Friday, Fort Smith Northside and North Little Rock. You got the hog commit, Jalen Williams. What about Khalil Ware? who has the offer from Arkansas 2022. Williams, of course, from 2020. But in 2023, we're talking about Bryson Warren. He also has an offer. Yeah, it was a big night. I mean, North Little Rock is, was undefeated in 6A Central play. It's a big rivalry game between those two teams. They've met in the state 6A, 7A state title game the last two of the last three years. And uh, Northside actually upset North Little Rock at home with Musselman and, and Williams, as you mentioned, in the house. Jalen Williams, the uh, 2020 commit, he had a big game. 21 points, 14 rebounds, 5 assists three blocks, made some big defensive plays at the end of that game for a 45-42 win. But the key is that Musselman obviously, obviously with, with Williams on board wants to make sure he understands that he's there to see him, but also those young targets for the Razorbacks. You talked about Khalil Well, 6'10", probably pushing 6'11". Now he had 10 rebounds and 6 points. He has his moments against Jalen Williams. It's also a good learning curve for him there. Uh, but then Bryson Warren, that freshman, he's electric. He's, star he's been a starter all year for North Rock. That's a first for the charging Walkouts head coach Johnny Rice, and he's he had 11 points in that game in a low scoring game. He was the leading scorer for, for North Little Rock, uh, but it was just a you know, you got three recruits 45 minutes down the road from Fayetteville. It was good to see Musselman and, and Coach Williams there as well. Absolutely, Kevin. Thanks very much. We appreciate your work on hogville.net. By the way, you could go to hogville.net regularly to check out the SEC power rankings in stories from Kevin McPherson. Back